In this lesson, we're going to work some more on this idea of evaluating expressions. And uh, remember, when we evaluate expressions, we want to think of the letters as kind of a container to place the indicated number in. And so I'm going to take this expression and basically rewrite it so I have this negative dropping down, this minus dropping down, but just instead of n, I'm going to put what it tells me to put in for n, and that would be negative 24. Since there's already a negative sitting here, I need to make sure that I put that negative 24 in parentheses. And for p, I'm going to put negative 19. And since there's already a minus there, I need to put that negative 19 in parentheses as well. Now remember that in the case of the opposite of negative 24, we understand that the opposite of negative 24 is just 24. So in the next step, that simplifies to 24. And then over here when we see this minus sign, we know that we're supposed to get rid of minus signs. And I've given a couple different strategies for doing this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is notice with the subtraction sign that I can cross the line, change the sign. And so what I end up with is plus 19. And so for all the negatives and minus signs involved, this actually ends up simplifying down to just adding two positive numbers, which is kind of nice. So we end up with a sum of 43. So that's our answer to this first problem. Let's go down to this next problem. This is uh, tends to be a tricky one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two ways that you can do this problem. Um, the first way uh, I think is actually a little harder. And then I'll show you kind of a shortcut that might um, help you um, in the future. So again, we're going to place the numbers in for the letters. So instead of x, I'm going to write 15. Instead of y, I'm going to write negative 24. And so since there's a plus sign in front of y, I better put that negative 24 in parentheses. Now here's where um, a lot of people kind of get derailed in this problem. This minus and this negative must be written down here regardless of what z turns out to be. So let's just write those in right now. I have minus, I have negative, and then I have whatever z is, and then I'll close off that parenthesis there. So I've literally literally written the entire thing down except for I've left a blank spot for z. But what is z? z is negative 5. So I actually have to put negative 5 in parentheses here. A lot of times people write this down and they'll say, oh my gosh, this can't be right. There's too many, uh, there's too many of these dashes of negatives and minuses. But that is correct because I had a minus negative here and then z was also a negative number. All right. Well, how do we deal with this? Well, first of all, we deal with this in here as the opposite of negative 5. Right. Think of this as the opposite. So the opposite of negative 5 is, of course, 5. And so this works down to negative 15 plus negative 24. Minus is dropping down from the previous step. And then this entire thing inside parentheses became just 5. Because the opposite of negative 5 is 5. And then the only thing left to do here is we've got a minus sign, so we want to cross the line, change the sign. And so now what we have is negative 15 plus negative 24 plus negative 5. And this is kind of nice because we have all negatives and so we can just add those up over on the side here. And so that leaves us with 44. But of course, since they're all negative, the answer is negative 44. Now, I told you I'd show you an alternate way of doing this. Basically, 
uh, this whole mess here, minus negative negative, is kind of a little rough on the eyes. And so one thing that you're free to do, as an alternate way of going about this, is to, whenever you see a minus negative um, in a variable expression, feel free to change that to plus a positive while there's still letters in there. So it would look like this. Negative x plus y minus negative z becomes negative x plus y, and we know that minus a negative becomes plus positive z. All right, so if you want to show it as cross the line, change the sign, you can. You can just do that. And so you've made a new variable expression that's equivalent to the one that we started with. And then when you go in to plug the numbers, negative 15 plus negative 24 plus negative 5, the moment you plug in all these numbers, you're already to this step right here in the previous strategy. And so then you just have to add them all up and get negative 44 just like we did. So this is another way of, of getting at the same exact answer. See a minus a negative in the variable expression, feel free to change it right away. So now let's, let's go down to this example. Um, so we have the opposite of the absolute value of negative m plus the absolute value of negative w. First of all, notice this is not the opposite of negative m, right? So I wouldn't want to just change that to an m because when there's absolute value bars there, we know the strategy has to be take the absolute value first, then apply this negative. So let's just leave everything as is and go ahead and put in the number. So I have the opposite of negative 15, so just putting in 15 for m, plus, now notice this negative comes straight down, and in here I'm going to put what w is, but it says w should be negative 7. So since w is negative 7, we're going to put negative 7 in parentheses. I'm sorry, I'm not very happy with that. It's kind of messy, so let me just give myself a little bit more room there. Okay, so negative 7 in parentheses. So everything was rewritten, and you can see what we have here is 15 is right there in place of m. Negative 7 is right there in place of w. And so, first of all, um, over here on the right, I notice I have a little bit of work to do before I can actually take the absolute, or sorry, yeah, before I can actually take the absolute value, I have a little bit of work to do in here. So let me just rewrite the first term there, the opposite of negative, or the opposite of the absolute value of negative 15, plus... Before we take the absolute value, we better figure out what's going on in here. Well, we have the opposite of negative 7. Well, the opposite of negative 7 is, of course, 7. Now we can take the absolute value of each number. And so understand what's happening is we're going to take this negative sign and drop it right down. But then we're going to take the absolute value of negative 15, but we know the absolute value of negative 15 is 15. So this negative, understand, is coming from the expression, and then the absolute value of negative 15 is 15. Then I have plus, and then the absolute value of 7 is 7. And so, of course, the only thing left to do here is understand that we have different signs, so we're going to subtract get 8 there, but of course since the negative's on the bigger absolute value, the answer is negative 8.